श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम हरिओम टू एवरीबडी इन अवर हेक्टिक लाइफ यू एवरीवेयर वी आर मेड टू कॉन्सेंट्रेट मोर एंड मोर ऑन our commitment towards the professional life <coughs> and of course to our family life and some part of our time is also spent on our social life this is what we do during our waking hours early morning when we get up we are a member of the family we are a part of the family we have our own duties and obligations and then we move to the field of profession and then evening we retire back and on weekends we might visit some people in this hectic schedule though we may be having some idea about the indwelling and all pervading reality whom we name as god we we are made to unknowingly unwittingly sideline the basic and vital factor in all of us anything concerned with that is called spirituality normally when the word spirituality is uttered we associate ourselves with some spiritual discipline some of this order some bhajan some temple visit or idol worship or uh, swadhyaya you know learning of shastras once in a way whenever we are given the opportunity and the inclination and the time and availability we attend that and we are back to square one but the indwelling and all pervading reality also provides us various opportunities for us and he has to make ourselves as receptive to learn something about to know something about to understand the relevance of spirituality in our life we as a person comes first then only the rest of the things come and the study of this individual is directly related to spirituality our master param pooja papa swami ramdas of ananda ashram in india kerala he used to say the spirituality that cannot be applied in actual life is no spirituality that means it is absolutely relevant in our family life professional life social life and the personal life at the appropriate time he facilitates us to dwell on this normally when we think about ourselves the individual you know every one of us sitting here can think about the me and mine at the moment in our mind it was not there when we were in the form of a seed in our mother's womb kindly think about it do we think we have any role in that the present me and mine in us the present me and mine things that it is planning it is doing it is it has got commitment it has got duties it has got these desires ambition cravings it has got these fixed opinions likes and dislikes so many things they all put together is this me and mine this me and mine was not there when i was conceived in my mother's womb and after that for the 9 and 1/2 months when the seed was growing how it has been blessed with these 200 and odd organs to be developed did i have any role in it when i came out 
did we bring anything? Whatever is needed for our basic requirement, like the air we breathe, the water we drink, the earth on which we stand, the space in which we move about, the 98.4 degree temperature to keep us alive, sun, rains, metals, minerals, gases, what not. We have not brought anything. It has already been set up here. And as I started growing, I need a lot of creature comforts. Kindly think about it seriously. And these creature comforts, I have not brought anything. Over the period, we don't know when it started. Through the selected individuals, they were able to discover, invent, innovate so many creature comforts which make our life comfortable. Including the very language with which we are now sharing. We have not done anything. So, whatever that is required for our basic existence, whatever that is required for our comfortable life are provided by factors other than us. Think about it. Anything. When that being the case, should we not think about the origin, the source of us and the source of the entire world? This inquiry, you know, is facilitated through spiritual journey. When we know that we are not responsible for the very life which came in the form of a seed, our intellect cannot. Normally we feel, you know, we owe our origin to our parents. No doubt, they are the instrumental cause. But they are not the ultimate cause because they were also born to their parents. They were also born to their parents. So where from it started? Our intellect cannot reach there. So normally we go to Shastras. Just like when we were students, you know, in the mathematics class, when in algebra, when we are given a problem, the teacher used to say, put X. Finally, you will know what the X is. Similarly, we go to the Shastras and in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, he says, Bijam Maam Sarva Bhutana. I am the eternal seed of everything. I means what? When you say Lord Krishna, he means what? Papa, our Gurudev Parampuja Papa Swami Ramdas used to define this source as subtle and mysterious power. This power is not to be limited to one particular entity in so many forms. So when he says Bijam Maam Sarva Bhutanam, in so many slogas he keeps on repeating it. We put it as X and try to understand. So why we are starting it? Because we owe our origin to that power and also to the creations. Through the creation only we are taken care of. Even when we come, now this building, when there was no construction in the world, civil construction, he made somebody to think about it. When there was no language in the world, he made somebody to think about it. When there was no brush, paste, soap, wash basin, commode, eatables, each and everything he made somebody to think about it. So we owe everything to this creation. We may be working in an organization. The concept of bringing out that organization, where from it came? In Srimad Bhagavad Gita, he says, in what form he is there? He is in the form of life force. Jivanam Sarvabhudeshu. 
he is in the form of awareness consciousness he is in the form of primordial intelligence buddhir buddhi vatamasmi i am the intelligence of the intellect so when gurudev says that the source is subtle and mysterious power that mysterious power becomes expressive in the form of life force in the form of awareness or consciousness in the form of primordial intelligence when we are talking through this amplifier this mic think somebody was prompted within no to think in terms of amplifier we would not have had any idea there is no amplifier at all that primordial intelligence when we see a fruit fruit is a gift of mother nature but one individual has to go and identify and declare you know think this is banana you would not have named it as banana but a fruit it is eatable later on the labeling would have been done so behind everything there is that power there is that power and subservience to that power alone can make this individuality understand that i owe everything to him let us now go through the words of our master on what is spirituality it might throw some light to us what does spirituality mean that is the question that which relates to the spirit and the experience of the spirit is spirituality because spirit and matter are two different things our body is material and the spirit dwelling in this body is spiritual so whatever relates to the spirit within us is spiritual we must think feel and realize that we are not merely bodies but we are immortal spirit many people go with the impression that they are only this visible appearance that is the body made up of the five elements it is not so there is the spirit within us it is that spirit that makes us walk talk do everything now for instance people think when they give and receive with the hands that they are doing these movements and these actions themselves as if they got an independent power to do this thing there are so many movements and changes that are going on within the body such as the action of the digestive organs the blood circulation the growth of the air we can add here the heart beat breathing we cannot say these things are done by me can we say i am doing these things who is responsible for this movement within us the same power which is responsible for this inner movement is responsible also for our outer movements we see the wind blow the sun giving light the trees grow the birds sing on the trees so many movements and changes going about us they are not separate movements caused by any power of individual in them working accidentally or by chance or as they say due to the concourse of atoms or some other things they explain a way in order to deny the existence of spiritual power that permeates the entire universe and is responsible for all movements and changes in it that all pervading power it is that makes act talk and do everything if we recognize this universal power and know that that power is responsible for what we do then our ego will disappear and we will be one with the universal life and universal truth and we will be supremely happy and free so long as this ego is in us which makes us feel that we are everything ourselves we are caught in a trap and we can never be happy so we have been asked to resign ourselves to the will of god will is nothing but the power of god active in nature active in ourselves 
will is nothing but the power of god active in nature active in ourselves so by surrendering ourselves to the divine power and will we will release within us that supreme bliss and peace which is locked up through this the ego and the individual will disappear people have asked him often what about the free will how does it stand in relation to divine will really there is no free will there is only divine will working everywhere it is a mistake to think we have got any power to do anything in the bhagavad gita there is a shloka in which god says it is my will and power that pervades through the entire earth and to know this means myself causing all movements in it all changes in it and so he is at the inception at the growth of things and at the destruction of things it is one power that does all these things in the universe and if we submit to that power and know that the power is active in us then we will be freed from the ego and that moment we realize that we are the unchanging immortal all pervading spiritual and universal truth and spirit to know that we are that spirit is to know him god and this is spirituality so we close our eyes and watch ourselves we can feel the body my hand my legs my tummy my face so i can't be my face as my shirt but it is very very close i am aware of my thoughts so that means somebody is there no so that that cannot be defined we know that but it can't be defined even during the deep sleep state this me and mine is absent but at the same time the moment we get up when we ask how was it wonderful who is telling wonderful so even when the thoughts were absent consciousness is still there you know so if you have been asked by masters and the shastras to deeply ponder over this we carry on with our usual life we try to bring in this dimension now we were hearing the ram nam chanting we come from ananda ashram where the main stay is on ram nam and the ram stands for that power the subtle and mysterious power so there should be some discipline in us to make us aware of the presence of the almighty lord of the universe who is within and without he is the creative force the sustaining power the destructive force he is love truth compassion so many things we can add on but as a first step let us try to watch how does the heart beat do we do anything just like we had no role in coming to this world this present me and mine the same present me and mine also does not know the date of death but we know that one day this body has to be dropped because we have seen everybody dropping the body you know so we start thinking more and more about the spirit and be active you know be dynamic in wherever that has prompted us so actually we feel we have been given a family by that power we have been given a profession by that power we have been given a society by that power so the whole thing we do not say make any changes outward but the only thing is the ownership is slightly initially you know we try to hand it over but our me and mine is very strong it will not easily hand over so we try through various methods to become aware of the real owner in us
and this forms the basis of spirituality. So how to translate this into our very life? Any discipline like you know remembering him through chanting, nobody will be able to chant throughout their waking state because they have got their own commitment towards family, profession, society. So during the non-chanting time, how do we remember this indwelling and all-pervading reality? Varieties. We try to go deep into everything. So here Gurudev says, when you handle anything, you handle with a touch of love, with a touch of perfection, with a touch of dedication, with a touch of gratitude. Whether in the family or in the professional field or in the social. Anything that we handle. Because we know when there was no such thing like this wire, somebody, he prompted somebody, that power within him, that spirit within him, prompted him to bring it out. So when we handle it, when we offer flowers at the deities, what, what attitude we have? When we do arati, what attitude we have? When we take the tirtha, what attitude we have? That has to be stretched to all our thoughts, words and deeds. We bring efficiency, you know. There are two types of efficiency. One is outer productive efficiency. And the other one is inner character efficiency. So while we are active in our daily life, we try to ensure these two dimensions. Outer productive efficiency, whatever we are engaged in, we will try to bring out our efficiency. Normally people used to say there are three types of causes in any activity. One is called the material cause, and then the instrumental cause, and then the efficient cause, intelligence. When we try to uh, harmonize all this, we bring out perfection. We will not compromise on quality. So outwardly, we will, while we are engaged in outer productivity, we will also simultaneously be developing this inner character efficiency. What is inner character efficiency? Associating ourselves with this power. You gave me this body, mind, intellect complex. You gave me the field. You gave me the wherewithal. And you gave me the prompting. So when we are uh, when we handle anything at home, when we maintain our household requirements, when we cook, when we serve, there will be a touch of love in everything, touch of perfection in everything. And when we go to the field of profession, we try to bring in the same. This is what he has given. The only thing is, the attitude is slowly getting changed. Instead of, I am doing it, I am made to do. We don't have to tom tom. It is a mental, what do you call, exercise. Everything becomes in a passive voice. Because when we think about it, when we think about something, we are working in a company, the company, the first person to whom the spirit gave the concept, and the spirit also gave very facilitated so many things to bring in existence of that institution. Through sentient and insentient factors. That means materials as well as human beings. So many human beings were prompted to associate with it. And then we may be one among them. He, he made us to apply for it, he made us to get selected and we work there. So with this idea, we, we are not working for the employer, we are working for him, the super employer. He is a relative employer. 
So we try to bring in a touch of love, touch of perfection, touch of dedication, touch of gratitude. And in the, with our friends. So that means spirituality is slowly entering into our daily life. It is not disconnected with the common run of life. Because it is there. We were told by one doctor, six liters of blood is passing through 1,20,000 kilometers a day in our body. How many cells are being activated? They are born and die in one second, you know. So many things. Do we have any role? The me and mine. There is, there is a life principle that is activating. And that life principle, when it drops the body, next moment we will be thinking about when, uh, when are we having the cremation, when are we having the burial, something like that, you know. Immediately the whole language changes. Do we think about it? When he says, Jeevanam Sarvabhudeshu in Bhagavad Gita, I am the life force in everything. Gurudev used to say, life is the expression of Atman. You know, this, this uh, subtle and mysterious power is also known as Atman, Brahman, God, whatever we feel like. All synonyms of the same principle. And this subtle and mysterious power is not palpable, you know. It is a subject. It is the, it is the presence. By its presence only these words are now coming. By its presence only all are hearing. Everyone is feeling we are sitting. Everyone feels that we are. The beingness. So we don't have to go and search for anything. A great devotee of uh, Mahatma Ji, Acharya Vinoba Bhave, he used to say that the whole world is God's book. In every page, that means in every creation, there is a name written, God. So we, we refuse to open, that's all. We refuse to see that signature. Behind everything, you know, there should be a seed. When we see it, you must have seen at least in, uh, in TVs or news, a coconut plant, for example, a coconut tree. A coconut tree comes from, or a bindi, okay, daddy's finger when we use. It needs a, it needs a, a seed. And the seed is sown and a conducive ambience is provided and then it sprouts, then it flowers, then the fruition of it gives a lot of seeds. It is self-propagating, you know, we don't have to do anything for that. So entire this thing is self-propagated, where from the first seed came. And the varieties, the, 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 the sweetness in the sugar cane, the bitterness in the bitter gourd, the spiciness in the chilies, the sourness in the tomato. Think, where from? Why should we go to there? Nobody, of course, it is not there. Our mother delivered nine children. Of course, many dropped their body and went. But nobody is alike, you know. Same source. For example, uh, me and my elder brother. The difference is only one and a half years. So we must have been living there 15 years under the same roof. The same breast milk, the same food, the same school. But we are different, you know. So we start thinking. Our material science teaches when the raw material is same, 
when the process is same, the end product also should be same. <laughs> but here it is not so. So we try to understand why our intellect cannot. Then we try to go to the Shastra again. And there, see, it is all because of the previous karmic bondage. Panchendriya Mahabhudam Sambhavam Karma Sanchitam Shariram Sugadukhanam Bhoga Ayatana Ujjate This is a tent of experience. This is, a, this is a residence. Residence of experience. How did I get it? Karma Sanchitam. Apart from the five elements, it is because of my previous baggage. So that means in our life, in our present life, Swami Shinmayanji used to say, we are giving a blueprint to the Almighty of what our next life should be. If we are unaware of the subtle and mysterious power, substratum in us, and if we try to identify ourselves with anything other than that, naturally the me and mind will have its own predominance in us. And because of the predominance of the me and mind, we will try to develop more and more unfulfilled desires, cravings, infatuations. And that is the baggage, that is the capital with which we start our next life. Think. So this, it doesn't mean that we are belittling the importance of material science. Our master used to say, material science and spiritual science are the two sides of the same coin. Both are in absolutely needed. Nothing is to be belittled. We are blessed with material science, you know, the bounteous gifts of material science. That takes care of all our creature comforts. Spiritual science takes care of our inner development, character development. We try to find the common factor in all of us. And that is why we will be able to properly relate ourselves with the entire creation, not only human beings, even this asana. We will handle it with love. We will not treat it as a matter. We may initially we may fail, we may forget. But some discipline we try to impose on ourselves by which this vital factor is remembered. In ashram. Gurudev prescribed a triune path. Nam, Seva, Dhyan. Nama to remember this power. The power by because of which you now the words are now coming out. No? Because of which the hands are now moving. Because of which everything is happening. But we may not be able to remember him sitting silently for the whole of the waking stage. So we try to bring these four mantras, you know, touch of love, touch of perfection, touch of dedication, touch of gratitude in anything that we do. Whether we wash our plate, whether we sit before the computer for our project, whether we are trying to bring out a software, everywhere we try to bring in this dimension, in any field. There is no field that is taboo because everything is provided by that power. And then, one more aspect. The, when we get ourselves in, involved in external matters, there is a likelihood that we may unknowingly, unwittingly remember the inner power. So, whenever it is possible for us, we try to take to inward journey and try to identify Try to, that is not the right word, identify. Try to become aware of that power. And uh, Gurudev says, if our, of the three, Nama chanting is preeminent. In the sense, if we do chant that with that feeling, it is not merely chanting. He specifically said, 
while we chant there should be an undercurrent going on in our mind we are chanting the name of one who is within us who is the subtle and mysterious power and who is also making me to chant so the inward you through the inward journey we try to slowly feel the nearness of his presence and then we have been assured that we will get a glimpse of that presence and then we will get stabilized in that presence and then we will be able to see the presence in everybody it is purely an internal exercise that is going on outwardly no change is needed because everything he has ordained he has given us a sense of freedom though not freedom by giving us a sense of individuality he has given us a sense of freedom to act we have been told that it is something like suppose you have you tie a cow to a tree the length of the rope gives it little freedom it can choose whether it's a swampy place whether it is water is there whether it there is grass is there whether there is resting place is there like that we have been given a limited freedom which is called the sense of individuality to choose ultimately the reins are with that power only we know that suppose we feel the pulse tak 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 suppose we say stop will it stop the breathing like there so many activities and the thing is there we should know that the material science makes us aware of what whatever is there through its various branches it makes us aware of the potentiality of the creator and the creation and the, just like in a in a house there are different types of children for the same parents we have varieties everywhere even in flowers you find find different varieties because different creation no man is alike each one is unique so each one has to draw out a charter of a, a, a path by himself or herself that is why uh, everything is given to us different taste different fruits different taste temperament inclination aptitude everything is there why why so you know so why suppose we ask this question then we know slowly we will try to become equipped with a sense of equanimity when he said you know there is no individual will there is only the divine will that works then 99% of the problem will be solved if we realize this individual will is the one which makes me restless which makes me insecure which makes me stressful but suppose when i think about him serenity prevails calmness prevails efficiency comes out and we will all be able to handle everything with equanimity samatva this is the tangible relief let us not bother about god realization and this and that there is the tangible relief is that we will be able to handle everything with a serene calm quiet mind we will be able to handle the men and matters any situations and that, for that spiritual science helps us a lot so along with productive efficiency we try to develop this inner character efficiency by ourselves we cannot do it so we pray to him ah uh, yes example of the uh, where is the first seed ah uh, this power at the moment our intellect will not be able to raise ourselves to that level 
so we have to rely on the words of the masters who have scaled the heights this power this dynamic power wanted to become many so many creations took place and the final creation is the human birth and when the first human being came into the world according to what we have been told by seers they went and sat no activity they were immersed in that then that power knew unless we give a sense of individuality it will not develop so that is why a curtain a veil was given so that is what you, we are all suffering now that is the starting point it is called avidya ignorance so when adi shankara says there are three bodies one is this gross body second is the subtle body third is the causal body as we said you know this this body is constituted of the five elements and the subtle body is panja prana mano buddhi desh indriyam five organs of action five organs of perception mind intellect five prana vital air five functions and then the rudimentary factors of these five elements okay that is how this sukshma of sharira a subtle body la karana sir why it came then he says anadi avidya anirvachya karano padir uchate it is beginningless it cannot be described and uh, anadi avidya anirvachya so the, then what do we do now our search should begin inside then we will come to know later we have been promised by the seers that he will at the appointed time draw himself into himself we will just read out one beautiful book written by uh vanamali there she puts it the puranas declare that the whole of life is indeed the leela of the lord play of the lord the power in which he himself is the hero and the villain the actor and the audience the director and the producer the song and the silence even the very stage on which the drama is enacted it is by a large mobilization of his prakriti his energy his will his power that he manifests himself in all this multiplicity but then the question arises as to why he allows himself to get caught in the web of his own creation can the spider be trapped in its own web explanation is simple the best actors are those who can completely immerse their private lives in the personality of the character they are portraying so also in the cosmic drama the supreme actor has to forget his true nature and allow himself to be caught in the web of his own maya if he is to completely and satisfyingly enact the different roles he becomes the king on the throne the beggar in the street the murderer about to be hung and the victim lying in a pool of blood as well as the judge pronouncing the judgment in the court he is the solo actor the solo engineer the only experience oblivious of his divine origin submerged in the role he is playing laughing crying dancing singing living dying the avatar comes in order to free the jiva from this complicated web of divine origin and enable it to realize its own nature there are so many explanations like that but these are all explanations unless he everyone goes within and try to find the answer if we if we get an answer from outside it is their answer not our answer that is why both the spiritual scientists as well as the material scientists 
they went deeper and deeper nobody guided them you know when the water when one person saw the water the probing nature which god gave him through intelligence then later on he declared it is h2o similarly it is behind every create every creature comfort every creation here we say man made creations but the truth is there it must have started from somewhere with that inference we should be true because nothing can come out of nothing and during one of his talks uh, to highlight this uh, in a different way uh, swami ji said there is mud and pot without mud there cannot be pots pot is nothing but mud in different forms removal of mud from the pot means nothingness therefore mud is inherent and concurrent in pot without a cause there cannot be any effect effects are nothing but cause in different forms removal of cause from the effect means nothingness therefore the cause is inherent and concurrent in effect so we are all the effects that much we know we don't know the cause so we will put it as uncaused cause there should be a first cause you know without that it we cannot come but that cause cannot be subjected to this cause and effect theory so it has been beautifully named as the uncaused cause that uncaused cause is in all of us without that uncaused cause we, none of us will be there no creation this creation is nothing but the uncaused cause in different forms removal of the uncaused cause from me means nothingness therefore the run cost to cause is inherent and concurrent in effect with this background we try to go within and all our outer activity should be compatible with this inner journey our family life our professional life our social life at the moment we are not aware of it so we start from our me and mine level now we know that this me and mine level was not there at the origin that much we is it is logically <laughs> rationally we can understand but there must be a cause when i was there in the form of a seed that is it is beautifully brought out in bhagavad gita in five or six shlokas if we keep on pondering over it and try to take an inward journey we have been assured that he will assist us we have we can only say he it is not the right word but some word should be used you know so the he or she we can call it as mother we can call it as that power so so many vedantic words are there purusha prakriti purushottama but for ordinary people like us it is easy to understand that uh, when we know that this present me and mine has started exercising its control over us only later so there is an origin for all of us so too an origin for every creation so kindly enable me to realize that so when we that we have been assured that we will be able to realize that and the stage comes when the seeker and the sought become one anything else right from our childhood we have not been given this dimension when we have already have lot of concepts about our life norms traditions customs and which are fueled by this what do you call challenges duties commitments we find it difficult to translate into this real life it is not easy we try out of 100 one if we succeed one only can become two you look back to your own life everything we have learned by repeated performance even while writing the alphabets how many times you know even while right from a child you know we want to get up how many times so nothing comes without any uh, effort on us so we keep on trying trying 
he did not will that it should be given as soon as he started knowing about the world. He made us to have a lot of concepts about world, life, this and that. And one fine morning, this, this dimension is given. So it is nice to hear, but when we go to the field, we find it difficult. But this is the truth. So by perseverance, patience and uh, commitment towards this ideal, we have been promised by everybody who have scaled the heights that it will become a reality. Continuous effort should be made. Uh, that is why this Nama helps. When we take a given name to that power and we chant it and with all faith and devotion, our master used to assure us, we don't need anything else. That will remind us whenever we go off the track. Suppose I put this like this, immediately it will remind, hey, what did you do now? Even when we uh, do something at home, something at office, something with the friends, unknowingly if we forget about it, identify it as a, as a, as a matter and then treat it like that, immediately this Nama inside will remind. It is 100% sure. So we must hold on to one particular sadhana, we say, you know, discipline, by which we are reminded of this. Oh, I shouldn't have thought like that. I shouldn't have talked like that. I shouldn't have done like that. This is how it will create. It is something like a uh, watchman, no? Watching us closely and whenever we go off the track, it will pull us up. From the minutest to the grossest. So first we try to do from the minutest. To go outside to love all, it may be difficult. But the moment you get up, you know, you keep your bed perfectly all right. The bedspread, the, the blanket, because you become, it has helped me, you know. You gave somebody to develop this idea of a, of a room, of a cot, of a bed, of a bed sheet. And when you take the brush, when you take the paste, and then you forget, forget. At least one we have tried, you know. Like that, we suppose we put ourselves on this discipline. In our work a day life, work a day life, work a day life. Mysteriously, you will find things are getting lined up. Now, at this stage, when you try, you will remember many of the experiences God made you to go through. Many of the things which God made you to observe. At that time, you did not think like that. But now you will start, oh, that is why he taught me. That's why our master used to say in one of your beautiful quotation. The world we live is a school in which observation and experience offer us immense possibilities for self-improvement. Nay, the world itself is Guru or God. Many, many instances you will find. You would have, from the individual level, you would have thanked him. But now you are, you will not, you will thank him. Previously, when somebody helped, we would have thanked that individual. We would remember something with all gratitude. Now we will also add one more dimension. You gave me that feeling. You gave, you made me to go through that. One incident, for example. We had a repeatedly tell, but I think it is worth repeating for ourselves. We were previously working in a company in Madras. And uh, at that time, somebody was coming from Kerala. In Chennai we were working, Madras. He was coming for the first time to Chennai, so he wrote to us that you should come and receive me at the station. I don't know the language also. So our working hours start at 8 o'clock in the morning. We were in the we were working in Bosch, no Michael at that time. 
our working hours start at 8 o'clock. The train comes at 8 o'clock. We were working in stock control, no? it's called Cardex on those days. Our department, our section has to invent, I'm sorry, order for uh, parts. We have to get it from the head office. And then when we get it, we do the allocation. There are so many back orders. And then only the whole sales activities get initiated. So it is the heart of the sales department. On that day, we were three people, two people, one was on leave, the other was sick. So we were in a dilemma, how to go to the station and how to be there. Finally, when we went to the section head, he said, don't worry, receive him and then come back. When we went to the station, it was half an hour late. <laughs> when we took him to our place, put him there, rushed up, ran to the office, by the time it was 10 o'clock. Still the attendance register was there. Normally the attendance register will go to the assistant manager's room, cabin, after 5 minutes. On that particular day, it was there. We were immediately signed, we started attending. One of our colleagues then came and informed that the assistant manager came to your section when I was searching for something. He asked for where are the people. So somebody said, uh, two are not on leave, one has gone on permission. So he made some comment, everybody takes their own decision, something like that. When this was told, we got you no know, upset. How can he say that? We rushed up here only for the company's work. And how can he make such a comment? So we immediately went started shouting to our boss, a section head. He said, in a company, so, so many things will happen, you carry on with your work. No, sir, I must get an answer. You go to the assistant manager then. So we went to his room. He was signing. With all love, he said, yes, sit down. Hmm, he will not sit down, no. So as soon as, yes, what brought you here? He said, all those things. And you made some comment, it has hurt us. This samatham, you know, we were mentioning. This had happened in 1964, but still it is fresh in our mind. So he said, you should at least respect the chair, though not the individual. That also we did not understand. Then he said, did, did I issue a memo? Did I leave a message that you should see me before you go for work? Did I ask for the attendance register? Slowly, we were back to, you know. And then finally he looked at and he got up from his seat. He is double of our age at that time. And he said, if you still think that I have wounded, I am sorry. Immediately we came to know what a small thing we have made a big mess about it. So we went, bow down. Immediately he said, forget about it man. Attend to this work, that's all. There was no post-mortem. At that time, we felt grateful to him. But now, when we go to a spiritual preceptor, a guru, then only we come to know that all these things are preordained to teach us how to handle a situation. It is not a, a subordinate and the national manager. Because he says, the world we live in is a school in which observation and experience offer us immense possibilities for self-improvement. So he was able to put himself in our shoe. This boy was, he did not take leave for the sake of company has come. So some comments we made. He had to make that comment because it should not set a precedent. That is why he said you should respect the chair, not so when he said you when you sit in this chair you will understand that. So before reacting to any events and individuals, we should do some thinking now. Why God is making me to do it? Then something is there to learn. This is how we slowly put this into practice. At one go it will never go. Very difficult. But slowly, inch by inch. Brick by brick we construct, you know, like that inch by inch we can slowly move. And we have seen 
it is possible. We still remember him, you know. There are so many such incidents. I am just giving an example. Uh, the world we live in is a school in which observation and experience offer us immense possibilities for self-improvement. Nay, the world itself is Guru or God. This is how we make a move. At least from today we can start, you know. <laughs> Are you? Uh, I find myself asking why a lot. Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did this occur? And when the answer shaves me, it makes me more upset. How does one overcome this? Do we ask when we bite a chili, why this is spicy? When we take a bitter gourd, do we ask why this is bitter? What happens to us? We are trying to accept the reality, you know. When we try to accept the reality as they are, slowly the why and wherefore will recede. Until such time it will be there. It is helping us. The, the, for certain things the why and wherefore might give us some answer. For certain things it will not give us any answer. So we be accepting, accepting everything as that. Suppose somebody is short tempered. We will say, you know, he's only short tempered, he's a good person, no? That means we are accepting him as he is. Short temper nature is there in him. So we, then, then there is no conflict inside. Acceptance will be there. That is called samatvam. If, if we put spirituality in one word, forget about everything. We, will be, we want to lead a peaceful life. At the end of the day, I must have a peaceful mind. Nothing should disturb me. So for that, I, the only technique is to accept everything as they are. So out of hundred, I may not be able to accept everything. One if I may have. I will know the technique of how to accept this reality. It is a self-evolution. Nobody can guide from outside. But we go back to our own life. God is, God is equal in giving to all of us. He is impartial. Previously we were doing it from the individual level. Now we try to add one more dimension to it. Then we get the meaning. The why and wherefore, that is a Papa used to say, there is no why and wherefore. It happens, that's all. And Puja Swami Sachidanandji, who always says, never react immediately. <laughs> so that we, we get a grip on ourselves. So he says, stand Ramnam for three minutes or five or three, three times or five times. By the time you would have got yourself. So that you will be able to handle it. A comprehensive approach will be there. The mo when, you, when, when I shout, when you look at me, you are only seeing the shouting means one side only. Think. So the why and wherefore question is natural. But the why and wherefore will definitely lead us. In the material science, it will give us some answer. The spiritual sign, it has to be experienced. Yes? When you talk about sadhana, what's the role of grace in this situation? What is the role of? Grace. Grace, grace. Grace, huh? Actually, it has been beautifully defined by Master. Grace, darshan, remembrance are one and the same. But when we go to a spiritual preceptor, a guru, a, a, a Mahatma who has scaled the heights, only when we go to him, we will know this. So we can say God's grace comes through him. Otherwise, the incident which I explained, it will be an individual to individual. 
but there is a god dimension there how will we know only when we go there and that we can put it as god's grace working through that perceptor it can be through anything so grace is not different actually uh, they say that grace is pouring on all alike like the sunlight but suppose your medium your this is opaque you will not see the light suppose it is translucent you will see some light if it is transparent you will see it clearly so the mind if the mind is devoid of this me and mine of impurities it becomes opaque i will not be aware of the grace not that grace is given not given to me and when he makes us to go to a spiritual preceptor a guru and who gives us this fundamental knowledge words of wisdom we slowly try to understand again we lose understand as he said you would like to understand but again we lose that is translucent state and by perseverance we have been promised that we will become always aware aware of his grace in the form of remembrance so grace and remembrance are synonyms but to know that we need a medium very rare cases they are relying on him directly ramana ramana maharshi you heard you know ramana bhagwan did not have any outer guru in the sense what but we are talking he was able to get, get, realize this by going within papa swami ramdas you know he also did not join any organization he did not have any we went inside to find out this there are many shri 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 ananda mahima but many other people they have been directed by spiritual gurus perceptor i won't say guru spiritual perceptor who has done deep gone deep and realized that is why we try to associate with them and they give us this meaning so grace is not de- denied to anybody grace is pouring on all alike swami chidanandji maharaj used to say there are three parts and the rains are going severe rains one part is ulta one part is sideways one part is directly facing the one which is facing direct gets the full water the one which is facing side gets partial water the one which is ulta will not get any water so grace is pouring on all alike 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 the only thing is we have to make our equipment our instrument pure that means by remembering by remembering by remembering whether grace comes or remembrance comes we can say grace comes remembrance comes only because of grace and grace is known only because of remembrance so these are all synonyms so the role of a spiritual preceptor is very important not physically we don't have to have a physical presence we can through his wisdom teachings through his presence through somebody sharing about his experience no in all these ways it can come and we will know that immediately oh correct really one swami who is in usa he came to ashram he was associating with chimya mission probably dallas must be that he was telling us one incident in kerala in ashram also we were involved in value based education sessions with children and teachers so he was narrating one incident one day a group of uh, 10 or 15 children of the age group between 8 to 10 12 or something they all came to him and told him swami some sh- share or something with you said i did not have any idea immediately you know we were, i was prompted to take them to the nearest park it is very near to them so park then he said he told me i did not know what to tell them i told them you go pick something and tell me why you have picked so they went after 10 minutes everybody came back the first man came with an old leaf boy why you have brought this 
Listen, what is this? It's an old leaf. Sir, this is not, Swami, it's not an old leaf. It was a tender leaf. It started drawing whatever it is needed from the stem. And then it started growing. When it grew, when it grew, it started getting the energy from the sun, from the air, from the water, and then pass it on to the stem. And after the innings were over, I got dropped. He said, I got stunned. I had never learned anything from even any scriptures. Then he asked, okay, why did you bring? Our life is also like that. Initially, we take everything from our parents, our society, our mother nature, and then, then we grow and we try to give back whatever we, whatever they have provided to us, and afterwards we will also get trapped. So the how how it works, how it comes, nobody can say that. He said, I have never heard this. But they taught me a wonderful lesson. I, I when I was sharing. Uh, Papa said, the world we live in is a school in which observation and experience offer us immense possibilities for self-improvement. The world itself is Guru or God. Whereas this boy has not heard this. Intuitively he got, you know. Mysterious. That is why Papa named it as mysterious power. Uh, and one more uh, we would like to share. When you see from this distance, you know, from here, from this level, you see a lot of objects, persons. But when you go to the limited, you know, this is limited. When you go to the terrace, the spectrum widens. Here you may see something not good, not something nauseating, something disturbing. But when you go to the terrace, you see more and more with the unknowingly, you will not be uh, uh, identifying with those which were disturbing you. When you go to the hilltop and look, beautiful. When you see from the aircraft. So, God teaches us, when you raise from your present level to a higher level, you will not see any abnormalities also. On the contrary, you will find it more loving, more beautiful. So, in our case, Raising ourselves to higher level means from the me and mine level is the lowest level. A little more higher level. A little more higher level. So that assistant manager could raise himself to a little more higher level. If he was treating me from my own level, he said, shut up, get out. If you don't want to work, you resign and go. That's not, no? That is the same level. But he was able to raise himself to a higher level. And see things. So teaching like that. So the quality, care and concern for others, when it steps in more and more in us, when it is kindled more and more in us, we are raised to a little more higher level. And from that platform when we look, the uh, we find that everything is okay, everything is okay, everything is okay. Hmm. Ah, yeah. So the grace in the sense when we wake up in the instant to show in the God and touch nature and see the God. What, what about that grace? Inner, inner light. On an Amavasi day, you know, new moon day, at 12 o'clock, midnight, you are sitting in this room, pitch dark everywhere. No electricity light, okay? Pitch dark. You need a light to know any other objects, you know? But do you need a light to know that you are sitting there? No. There is an inner light, you know. That is called consciousness. So he was ripe enough. Just like a dry wood and the fire. It will immediately catch. If it is damp wood, it will not catch. So Vivekananda went to Ramakrishna Paramahamsa as a dry road. So when with all that when he touched him, that inner light which he was unaware of, he, he was only viewing it from the me and mine level. Raising 
for a short time. It was not the truth that he got it immediately. He was given a peep into it. Later on, he did sadhana to get himself stabilized. But that was given by Ramakrishna Brahman. He knew the technique and he knew who is ripe enough. He used to say, kacha ego and paka ego. <laughs> the sense of individuality, when it is purified, it is called paka. When it is unripe, it is called kacha. Kacha will not have. So he knew Vivekananda was ripe enough. So with that, when he touched, it was, he was able to kindle, touch and kindle. And then he came out and then he did sadhana to get himself stabilized in it. It is one of the rare occasions. Rare. Both should be, you know, at that level, no? You see now, this subtle and mysterious power. Oh Lord, I have nothing to ask of you. I am blessed with all that one can hope for, ask for. I have a mind to think. It is thy glory. I have eyes to see, ears to hear. All these are thy glory. I have in front of me a world so vast and so variegated enough for me to express myself. Again it is thy glory. I can make, I can unmake. All these possibilities are again thy glory. I can even make this prayer to you. This capacity to appreciate you is again thy glory. I seek from thee nothing for you have given me everything inside me, outside me. Your presence is something that I can't miss. I don't want to miss. Let thy grace be upon me not to gain anything new but to make me see thy glory. In all my achievements, in all my capacities, let me see thy glory. Oh Lord, I have nothing to ask of you. The power because of which the heart beats, the power because of which the breathing takes place, the power because of which the digestion takes place, the power because of which the blood circulation takes place, the power because of which all my sense organs are active, Seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, tasting. The power because of which we can think and talk. The power because of which all the creation has come. All my creature comforts have come. So that power, it is thy glory, thy glory, thy glory, thy glory. This is one of the methods, you know. Chanting any name as well as an ardent prayer from the bottom of the heart. That means we, we are back to square one. The origin of ourselves, the origin of everything in the world. Two minutes, Ramnam.
आश्रम ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम और मास्टर हैज डिफाइंड पावर नो श्री स्टैंड्स फॉर विद नेम विद फॉर्म राम स्टैंड्स फॉर बोथ एंड बियॉन्ड बोथ जय स्टैंड्स फॉर विक्टरी विक्टरी इज टू दैट पावर व्हिच इज व्हिच हैज नो नेम एंड फॉर्म व्हिच इज आल्सो अपीयरिंग एज नेम्स एंड फॉर्म्स व्हिच इज बोथ and beyond both it is the meaning so as we keep on chanting we may not remember all this but slowly we try to bring in all these dimensions so that the journey gets hazened that is why they said oh, it's not merely ram om shri ram jay ram jay jay ram and ram stands for a subtle and mysterious power indwelling all pervading hari om